Welcome to another edition of the Don't Argue. That's right. All thanks to Palmer Bet. Gamble responsibly. That is the key message. And I'll tell you what, this bloke gets around. Don't worry about that. He's absolutely everywhere. And I'm speaking of Kirk Gilly and Gids. I don't think I've ever seen a better backdrop, mate, than that, big fella. We're normally in the man cave, mate, but this looks a bit better than the man cave, big fella. How are you? Yeah, no, going good, Matty. Right, it's um beautiful backdrop here, just up in uh, up in the enemy, enemy territory, mate. This time of year in Queensland, I wouldn't normally venture up here, <laughs> here mate, around Origin time. But no, mate, a little bit of R and R this week, and up to Hamilton Island with the family. So, um, beautiful spot. Do you get uh, a few of the locals, mate? Do they recognise uh, the, the the blue in uh, Kirk Gidley, mate? Do they give you a little bit of stick? <laughs> no, there's definitely a few footy fans around uh, up this way. I've seen a few para, para supporters here yesterday, but not too much sledging, mate, um, thankfully. Love it, mate. Hey, listen, I, I don't want to hold you up because it's a family holiday, mate, but let's have a look and let's talk about, uh, of course, uh, the talking points from last round. And, and the big talking point, Gids, is, is obviously that state of origin game and the carnage that has come from it. So Nathan Cleary, yeah. Tom Gilbert and Jay Arrow are all out for the remainder of the series after picking up injuries. Um, yeah. Unbelievable storylines here, isn't it? Because they're all very, very important <clears throat> players. And, of course, the Blues, mate, well, they've got to travel to Queensland for this next State of Origin game, number two, and it's a, it's a, it's a must-win. It is a must-win, mate, yeah. So they're all three big players, mate. You know, Tom Gilton and Jai Arrow were, um, were great for, for Queensland in that first Origin. Um, and, mate, obviously, Nathan Cleary, um, not, not, a, not a great scenario for, for Freddie and the Blues team to be looking at a, a new halfback to get into their, into their system for game two. And, you know, obviously cohesion and learn the team plays and uh, you want someone to come in and, and really uh, take control along with um, Jerome Luai if he's going to be the the, uh, the harvest partner. So not ideal. I know he'd be disappointed, but mate, I suppose, again, comes back to whether the right or wrong thing to do is is back up after origin or do you rest your players and that sort of thing. That's, that's the debate. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, Gids, and, and we spoke about it last week. You know, who was going to back up? Who were going to be some of the players that might play as many minutes, um, you know, in Origin 1, and they got, you know, an extra day or two to kind of get themselves right. Um, and look, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, when you see some of the biggest stars of the game go out with injury, uh, it's uh, it's not good, is it? No, it isn't, mate. I mean, the soft tissue one with, with Nathan Cleary would be um... – an alarming one, obviously packing up a few days later and then tearing the hamstring. Not ideal, obviously. Um, it's you know tough injury too to come back from, Matty. Like you could rehab it and he'll he'll look after us very professionally. I'm sure he will. But just trying to get some confidence back in your in your body and your hamstring, you'll have a bit of head noise there. I think. I know Jai Arrow's one was more um, that sort of hip drop top syndesmosis type injury, so hard to prevent that one. Yeah. And the Tom Gill one, I think, might have been soft tissue again. I'm, I'm not exactly yeah. 100% sure. But uh, but then again, mate, I've said, you know, we, we watched Appy Corris our back up two nights later and played like a stack of minutes for, for the West Tigers after playing. We played 80 in origin and done a heap of work defensively. So, mate, he, he, that's a bloody big effort, that is. Mate, uh, and I have to ask you, uh, they were just too good, the Maroons, uh, the other night, weren't they? That was, a, that was a huge win, wasn't it, kids? Massive win, mate. Huge win um, for Queensland. There's no doubt about that. I think, you know, it was there was a few errors. There was a, more penalties that we normally see in origin early in the game. There was um, a little bit of back and, back and forth throughout that sort of, what was that, 65 minutes maybe, maybe even the 70-minute mark. But for, for them to score... When the hammer scored, um, for Queensland to get on the outside of New South Wales and, and burn them and score with 12 men, uh, unacceptable um, defensively. And then, yeah, their last try where uh, Lindsay Collins jumped over the top of Tedesco. To, I mean, no, mate, that was all effort. It was yeah. all effort, you know. It was, yeah. a, I think he was, he, let, he probably let the team down a, a number of minutes earlier there with a drop ball attacking the New South Wales line. Probably thought, I, I, I need to. I need to repay the team here, and that was all through effort. So it was a fair try. It was it was good technique for a front rower. Ah, uh, he repaid him in spades, didn't he? Hey, uh, yeah. what about last Thursday night, kids? Uh, one of the games of the seasons, West Tigers and Canberra, eighteen zip, uh, Canberra, and that last seven or eight minutes. That was just phenomenal. Uh, got to 18 all, uh, kicked a penalty to the West Tigers to hit the front for the first time of the game. And then I must admit, that kick's mother, that was unlucky, mate. The penalty, Carmen. Oh. 
It was just effort. What you just touched on, you know, it was just desperation, wasn't it, to get the smother? Yeah, no, it was, uh, mate. I'm not sure. You know, I I think how, how do you penalise someone through through effort? You know, trying to yeah. save the game through you know trying to charge down a kick. And I know I think James Graham was a player who who got penalised for that previously and lost the game on the back of that, where he got penalised. Um, did he make contact with the legs as he's kicking? Yes, but what's the alternative? You know, does he does he not um, you know, chase the uh, kick chase or put pressure on as as hard as he can? And, and oh, no, it's a really tough, really mate, tough mate, penalty. Maybe missed, missed the kick too, you know. Like maybe missed the kick. Yep, that's what it's all about. So I'm not, I mean, like, I'm not sure, mate. If, again, in these scenarios, the refereeing scenarios, where you think, well, what's the alternative? You know, like for some of those hip drops as well. Okay, if I, if I'm put in that exact situation again, how do I do it differently so I don't injure the player or, or un, un, unintentionally injure the player? And I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is there. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, oh, unbelievable game. It was, it was phenomenal. Um, I, I remember I was kind of switching, uh, switching backwards and forwards, and I couldn't believe it when I was Mate, in, in the crazy end game. of the game, crazy oh. end of the game. Yeah, 18, 18 nil up, and then for it to be 18 all, then it went what 19 18, then it went 20 2019, wasn't it? It's been yeah. start. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Hey, what about the Warriors? Hey, man, I t- I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, i tell you what I did like, um, on the back of that game was Ricky Stewart's press conference. Um, you know, I think I think he was questioned around um, standing down Jared Croker. So Jared Croker could play three out of the game at home in front of his home friends, family, you know, with his teammates. And I, I just loved. I do. I did. I loved Ricky Stewart as the Australian coach when I played under him. Very passionate. Always put his players first, and was always uh, pretty. You know, he's always pretty outspoken in different press conferences. And I think he um, he was asked around whether. If they lost that game, whether that decision was the right move, and I just I, I watched it and I just loved the way he spoke about leadership and you know putting his players first, putting Jared Croker first, putting the the fans and the members first for his three hundredth game to be at home this week. So you know I love to see great press conferences, great leadership, and that was a that was a top example. Uh, he's a wonderful man, isn't he, Ricky Stewart? Like he wears his heart in his sleeve, mate, and you got to love him. You can't not love him. I reckon he's just a, he's an absolute beauty. Hey, uh, Gids, what about the Warriors, mate? Uh, their impressive season continuing. I must admit, I thought the Dolphins were a little bit over the odds last week. Um, Thirty-eight victory. Uh, you know, they, they, I think we're going to take them serious now, don't we? Yeah, for sure, mate. It was a, it was a solid win, mate. It was obviously at home, which they, they're playing well. Back over in NZ, but yeah, it was a convincing win. Obviously, the Dolphins mates have, have um, had a pretty fair season. They were, they were sitting outside. I think they were sitting fifth leading into this game. So, yeah, convincing win. And mate, the Warriors have been one of the more consistent teams, I think we could say. Yeah, no, I agree, mate. Uh, they've had a sensational year. Hopefully, it can continue. And uh, I must admit, I was keen on the Broncos last week, kids. Uh, I did have a little wager on them. Uh, they are just playing mm. so well. They believe in themselves at the moment. That was a really good win against the Sharks last week. Yeah, mate, you're right. They're, they're one of the best teams in the competition, Matty. I think we could say the Broncos at the moment. And I think we've spoken about that electric speed throughout their back line. Um, Obviously, Adam Reynolds is is a key key part of that's the cockatoos, mate, on the on the back of the, uh, the fence there, um, mate. Adam Reynolds, obviously, in a, an integral part of their team, and um, you know, not an easy feat going to Shark Park there on Saturday night to to knock over the Sharks. And uh, as we say, they they've been one of the most consistent teams and, and exciting teams, the Broncos, this season. Mate, uh, the other team that uh, I reckon really shocked everyone uh, last week, and their their best is good enough. We know that, but the Cowboys they had a thumping win over the Melbourne Storm, forty five twenty in the end, Gids. Yeah, how about to predict that type of blowout score for for the Cowboys? I, mean, I think we spoke about last predict. week that Cowboys Cowboys went into that game as the worst defensive or the worst defensive yeah. stats of the competition. So, you know, to keep the Storm to 20. I'm sure they'd still probably like to keep them less than that. But, yeah, to score 45 points against Melbourne, like Melbourne, mate, traditionally for the past 10-plus years since Craig Bellamy has uh, has been 20 years now. Uh, I know it's one of the priorities for the Melbourne Storm for, for week in, week out every year is, is their defence. So to have a blowout score like that against Melbourne, 
it was um, pretty unpredictable. Yeah, unbelievable, mate. Hey, listen, let's have a look. All thanks to Palmer Vet. We're going to call this the good, the bad, and the ugly. I like this. Something a little yeah. bit different. We're going to break down three markets with the three teams on the cusp, but I want you to pick out your best bet. Yeah, maybe your good, your bad, and the ugly out of these three teams. So the yeah. minor premier, uh, minor premiership, the top three teams, uh, Broncos are at two seventy five, Panthers at three bucks, and the Rabbitohs at four bucks. Um, give us your good, bad, and ugly for those three kids. Well, oh, yeah, I mean the the Rabbitohs have still got some decent value there at, at four bucks. Obviously, they've got to. You know, get their, their key players back on the park. Latrell, uh, Cam Murray might be in doubt, I think, for this week as well. Yep. I think there's some there's some decent value there. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see how mate, the Panthers go over the next six weeks while, while Nathan Cleary is out. I think it's a big test for them to see where yeah. they're at um, in, in the backup of, of his position. And the Broncos, mate, they deserve to be short, short odds there. So, so you, you're with the Rabbitohs here? At four bucks. Oh look, I, 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 I think, I Can't think the mate. Panthers are still. I think I still think the Panthers are the are the um, are the favourites for the competition at this stage. Yep. Right, eh? All right, mate. Right, eh? to make the top eight. Okay, this is uh seventh, eighth, ninth best odds. We got the Warriors at dollar seventy five. Had a sensational season. Roosters up and down all year, mate. Dollar eighty five, and the Dolphins a dollar ninety. Who at the start of the year, I think we pinned them at four wins would be a great result. They have exceeded that so far. What are you thinking here, mate? Well, man, I think the good odds are the Dolphins at one ninety at the moment. If they continue with with their form. their form that they've started for the first half of the year here with the back end, I think that's that's some good odds. Um, but I think the yeah the bad. I guess probably category might be the might be the Warriors, um, only because I'm trying to categorise each the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think the the ugly is still for me the Roosters. I think yeah. you know they they just just scraped through with a win on there on the weekend against the the Dogs. I thought, mate, Tedesco's response to the the un uh, the the criticism that he copped for Origin. Origin, like he, I think he scored two on the weekend. And he may have had a hand in the other one or two tries. Um, so, but I still don't think they're at where they're, they're at where they expect their um, their form and their uh, preseason goals, um, what they set for themselves. Might have been the spark that Tedesco needed just to really fire him up for uh, for this next Origin game number. Yeah. Hey, least wins. Okay, all thanks to Palmer. Bet this is the top three t- teams for least wins. Dragons are at a dollar seventy five. Tigers are at three dollars. Bulldogs are at eight bucks, so fair bit of discrepancy there. Um, what do you mm. think, mate? Well, mate, I thought the dogs had some good shape. They scored off on the weekend against the Roosters. Um, so, oh, look, the ugly for me is, is the Dragons. I just yeah, yeah from where their their season is at halfway through the year. They could really be sacked. ugly and bad, to be honest. The Dragons, yeah, couldn't yeah. they? Yeah, I mean the bad. The Tigers can be can be good, and they also can be pretty ordinary too. So you don't. It's a bit of a flip of the coin. What you're going to get week to week there at the moment. But yeah, right. I think the ugly is still is still the Dragons for me. Mate, something a little bit different from Palmer. Bit. Let's have a look at this weekend's yeah. matches, uh, and it starts Thursday night. It's the Titans taking on the West Tigers at Seabus Super Stadium, seven fifty head to head. Titans a dollar sixty eight. Tigers at two twenty. At the line, Titans minus two and a half dollar ninety. Tigers plus two and a half a dollar ninety. Key stats, all thanks to Palmer Bet. AJ Brimson is an outside chance of playing, while Sammy Verrills is in the frame to replace Chris Randall at hooker, who is obviously suspended for the Tigers. They look to go in with the same 17 that narrowly lost last week. It was a cracking game, as we just touched on. Titans beat the Tigers in round one, 22 10. Seems like an eternity ago. Titans have won their past four games against the West Tigers. And nine of the past 11. And the West Tigers have won only two of their past nine games played in Queensland. What are you thinking here, Gids? Uh, mate, I th- I th- I'm on, look, head to head, I've got the Titans here. I just think, you know, the Tigers were were valiant, mate, in their efforts to come back last week. I thought they left their, their run pretty late for last week's game to, to actually get in the competition. But, yeah, I think the, the Titans, mate, um, might just have have enough to get over the line. I think for Fudo, mate, he's been playing some really big minutes for, for the Titans this year, which is what 
what he's needed to do and what's required um, for him and his type of role, you know, his senior seniority in, in that team. Um, and big Tino, mate, backing up from Origin, I thought he had a big game as well. So, you know, all these clubs will get their, their Origin players again for, for this week before they get back into Origin camp. I think those players will certainly... Uh, want to put their hand up and, and do well for their clubs before going back into camp. Hey, mate. So Friday, Titans, head, head, Titans, mate, head to head. I'm actually going against you, mate. I reckon the Tigers. I reckon they've been all right. Okay. Um, and they're going to be pumped up. But uh, consistency is the, is the key, isn't it? You know, and the Titans have been That's a bit consistent this year. Hey, Raiders, Warriors, uh, this is going to be a beauty. Friday, 6 p.m., GIA Stadium, head-to-head. Raiders, $1.54. Warriors, you're getting some value here, two fifty. thanks to Palmer Bet. Raiders at the line, minus $4.50, $1.90. Warriors, plus $4.50, $1.90. Now, key stats here for the Raiders, Jared Croker, of course, to play game number 300. That is a huge effort, and uh, well done. They're no doubt going to be keen as muscle to get a victory for him and uh, Sebastian Chris could also return at fullback. Well, for the Warriors, Dylan Walker and Freddie Lucic are both in line to return from injury. Raiders have won seven of their past eight games. Raiders have conceded the second most tries in the NRL season, which is interesting, kids. They're going to be hard to beat, surely. In a, in a milestone game like this for Jared Kroger, uh, it is going to be huge. Yeah, for sure, mate. I think, geez, I like that's a bloody good stat. That is the, the Raiders have won seven of their. Of their Eight past oh, games, like that's that, that, that's some consistent, that's a consistent couple of months, mate. That, but as you say, mate, Joe Croker's three hundredth game for for the Raiders. And I think he he's really really well respected by his opponents. I think that's a really good rap for for any player. Certainly playing three hundred games, a massive effort. I know he's had some injuries over the last couple of years, which yeah. to get to three hundred, it's a big achievement. You know, and for the club and for Sticky to to back him and continue with. Um, selecting for for the Raiders is is um, a great show of support and confidence. So a huge game for for not just him but for the club, for the fans, and, and at home. So I hope it all goes well. To there's not too many players players that have played 300 games, mate, and it's a great milestone. And I'm sure his teammates will be right right up for it. Yeah, I mean, did you get to I've get got, to... Uh, Raiders, mate? I got to 251, mate. Great effort. Great effort, buddy. Two fifty one, uh, and you're right. Yeah. You're on. There's not many players get to that that three hundreds next level, isn't it, kids? You know, like um, it's uh, an astounding effort, I reckon. Like, um, uh, yeah, and- mate, three hundred in our all games. You know, I played fifty five over in over in Warrington, but um, yeah, you know, probably the standard standard week in week out isn't as as relentless as the NRL. So to play three hundred in our all games, it's a it's a massive effort. And as I say, mate, he. He doesn't seem he, he doesn't seem to be in too many too many blues or sledger matches or controversy. Like he's a really respected opponent, I think. I, I love Matty, I love his love his goal kicking. Uh just a real competitor. Mate, uh, second of the double header Friday night. Sea Eagles taking on the Dolphins, eight PM four points park head to head. The Sea Eagles a dollar thirty nine. Dolphins three oh three at the line. The Sea Eagles minus eight and a half a dollar ninety. Dolphins plus eight and a half a dollar ninety. Key stats here for Manly. Tommy Trevojevic uh, has been named to return after his head knock in Origin one. While uh, Josh Alawaye is available in a boost Manly, uh, which have been obviously depleted in that Ford pack with several injuries over the last couple of weeks. Dolphins, uh, big changes with Jared Wallace and Anthony Milford uh, both out uh, through suspension. Tom Gilbert and Brent Goat Lee are out with injury. Um, so some big losses there. Following four of their five losses this year, the Dolphins have bounced back to win the following week. That is an amazing stat. And the Seals yeah, have good stat. Their past five games against Queensland-based teams. What do you reckon, Gids? Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good stat for the Dolphins to bounce back Isn't to it? a win the following week after a loss. That's that's a great and a response. And that's a, team, that's, you know, like an inexperienced yeah. team. Dude, that's a fair effort. No, you're right, mate. That's a great effort. I'm not sure whether they can uh, they can bounce back, mate, from from last week's loss, especially without Jared Wallace and Anthony Milford um, suspensions. Uh, also, you have Tom Gilbert and Brent Lee out as well with injury. So. There's four four of your starting players out. Yeah, it's going to be a tough effort against the Eagles, mate. At um, at Four Pine Stadium, uh, Friday night. I'd be on, and I'm going to jump on the Eagles thirteen plus for this one. Uh, to win easy, to win comfortably. But they just keep delivering, the Dolphins. That's uh, what they've done all year. Hey, Saturday, 3 p.m., Dragons taking on the Rabbitohs at uh, Netstrata Jubilee Stadium head-to-head. Dragons at 3.23. Rabbitohs $1.35. Have a listen to those birds in the background. 
Dragons <laughs> at the line plus nine and a half at Dollar ninety. Rabbitohs minus nine and a half at Dollar ninety. Key stats here, all thanks to Palmer Bet for the Dragons. Jack DeBellin is out after suffering a head knock, but the Dragons do get back Jack Bird and Blake Laurie to bolster their Ford pack. While for the Rabbits, South are going to be or South are going to be with that Origin pair, J Arrow and Cam Murray. They do get Latrell Mitchell back from that calf injury that kept him out of Origin one. Surely he goes straight back. If he gets through the game, he goes straight back in. Gids for game two. Yeah, for sure, mate. I think he goes straight back into the Blues lineup. I just I think New South Wales probably missed a bit of his uh, his yardage carries, his strike Great power in, in, in attacking. I mean, he's also you know he's 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 up the the aggression part in Origin. You know, he can uh, he can certainly stir up the Queenslanders from an aggressive in, uh, point of view. Um, so, mate, the big thing is getting through this game. We when he returned from a calf injury, like it was only sort of what two weeks ago that might have ruled him out of out of origin. Um, and again, those soft tissue injuries can can be tricky to return from, but hopefully all goes well, gets through it. Yep. Look, I am on the I think the Rabbitohs mate 13 plus for this one for sure. I know Kim Murray mate, Kim Murray is so instrumental in just linking their um, their forwards with their halves. You know, he his ball playing is uh is amazing for for the Rabbits. So he'll be a big loss. And Jai Arrow also his work rate, his toughness. He's going to be a loss for for the Raptors as well, but I still think they can uh, they can win convincingly. Interesting too. I didn't mention Dragons are aiming for consecutive wins against the Rabbitohs for the first time since 2011. Right. And the Rabbitohs have won eight of their past nine games against the Dragons. So uh, yeah, that that's that's unbelievable stats to be honest. Uh, I reckon the yeah. Rabbitohs bounce back, mate. Latrell's the man. Make no mistake about it. Broncos v the Knights. Saturday, 5.30, Suncorp Stadium. Are you going to just uh, jump on the jet, mate, the private jet, and head down to uh, Suncorp Stadium, Gids, from uh, Hamilton? I'll North? probably get the chopper, mate, from here. Get the chopper. <laughs> get the chopper. <laughs> Hey, head to head, Broncos dollar twenty four Knights at four ten. Bit of value at the line. The Broncos minus twelve and a half dollar ninety Knights plus twelve and a half a dollar ninety. Key stats here for the Bronx: Selwyn Cobo to return after missing the Sharks game with a hip injury. While for the Knights, Lachlan Fitzgibbon is a chance to return. Uh, Knights have not won back to back games since rounds one and two in twenty twenty two. The Broncos have won five of their past six games against the Knights at Suncorp Stadium, and the Knights have won only two of their past eight games in Queensland. Upset, or what do you reckon, Gids? Uh, upset on the cards here, mate. I'll tell you what, you know what, I'll I'll take the start. Twelve and a half start for the Knights here for, for $1.90. That's not that's, a bad That's, that's decent not a bad value. Play. Yeah, I like that play. Not a bad start. Um, look, mate, as we said before, Broncos have been one of the form teams of the competition, so it's, it's a big game for the Knights. What... Um, Look, I think with the players that the Knights have on the park at the moment, like it's one of our our best teams. Um, Tyson Tyson Prezol will be back in this week after I think one of the best Origin players he was there for game one. And yep. Caelan Ponga is um, is in the team. Uh, we've got Dan Gargai as well. Um, both Safidi boys, so it's a pretty decent lineup for for the Knights. And uh, did, look at. Uh, a disappointing one that stat around. They haven't won back to back games yeah. since round one and two, two thousand twenty two. Like if you if you want to be a top eight team, which uh, the Knights will have to battle for throughout the back end of the year, then you've got to string a few wins together in yeah. a row. My oath you do, mate. That's an unbelievable stat to be honest. I don't know where they pluck them from the boys at Palmer Bet. They they do a magnificent job each mate, and every week. Do some research. Um so right, so you take the the Knights at the line. Knights minus yep, with the start. Right. Off start. Beautiful, mate. Saturday night, 7.35, Elyon Stadium. It's the Roosters and the Panthers. Head to head, all thanks to Palmer Bet. Uh, the Roosters, 250. Panthers, at dollar fifty four at the line. Roosters, plus four and a half, a dollar ninety. Panthers, minus four and a half, a dollar ninety. For the Roosters, uh, Joseph Suwali is facing a three match ban. Uh, that's going to see a reshuffle with Joey Manu into the centres, while Daniel Tupu is set to return. While Nathan Cleary, we know, is out with that hamstring injury. Jack Cogger to take over for the uh, New South Wales fullback. Panthers boast the best defence in the NRL, conceding just 12 points per game. While well, the Roosters are giving up 22 and a half points per game. And the Roosters yeah. are five from six of their new Allianz Stadium headquarters. So they do play well there. Panthers though, have won nine of their past 11 games without Nathan Cleary. So they step up a bit when the superstar's not playing. Good stat. Yeah, pretty decent stat. That mate, if you took out your starting halfback, I know, I know when we played without Andrew Johns, mate, the stats were pretty low yeah. when he wasn't playing. Yeah, I, I reckon most. Um, 
you know, most high performing sort of teams are in, in that top four or five. If you took it, they're starting half back, then the, the 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 winning percentage would drop pretty significantly. So that's a that's a great stat for the Panthers to have. Mate, it, it um, yeah, they've obviously got depth throughout their club. So to that's a great effort that is. So I think they can continue the the run with um winning without Nathan Cleary. So I think uh, Panthers mate for this one. Yeah, amazing, amazing stat that one. Storm v Sharks Sunday four oh five at Amy Park in Melbourne. Head to head, the Storm a dollar fifty seven. Sharks two forty two at the line. The Storm minus four and a half a dollar ninety. Sharks plus four and a half a dollar ninety. Key stats here, all thanks to Palmer Bet. Justin Olam is questionable after suffering a head knock last week. Georgie Jennings uh, as his replacement is ready to go. Sharks no changes uh, for their team. Storm have won five of their past six games against the Sharks. Sharks have not won at Amy Park since twenty eighteen. Five years ago, and Storm winger Xavier yeah. Coates has scored 16 tries in 14 games at Amy Park. He loves it down at Amy, just big coatsy. He does love it, mate. He's he's a big, tall, inf- you know, influential winger, mate. Uh, he's you know he's athletic. He's uh, yeah. he finishes can finish a try off for him, but his yardage carries are so so important for the Storm. Um, Justin Ollum questionable with his head knock. Look, he's he's man, he's as tough as they come and strong with his carries for for the Storm. Disappointing loss there for the Sharks at Shark Park against the Broncos there last week. And yeah, well, I guess there's a little, been a little bit of inconsistency for mate for the Sharks this season as opposed to probably probably last year. Um, and the Storm mate coming off a, a big loss there against the Cowboys last week. I think uh, Belly be fuming mate at the the amount of points they. That was scored against them, so I'm expecting a big, big return this week uh, for mate for the Melbourne Storm. So I'm yeah. going to back Storm mate head to head. Stormy will bounce back, that is for sure, mate. Bulldogs for the Eels Monday, four pm at the Core Stadium. Of course, it's the King's birthday long weekend, hence why we've got the uh, the Monday footy. Bulldogs two eighty five. All thanks to Palmer Vet. The Eels a dollar forty three. Bulldogs at the line plus seven and a half a dollar ninety. Eels minus seven and a half a dollar ninety. Key stats all thanks to Palmer Vet. Reed Marnie will be monitored after a head knock last weekend, while Jacob Caraz could also be available. No changes at the Eels. Uh, Mako Sivo leads the NRL in try scoring with fifteen from 13 matches. The Eels powerhouse has now scored 45 tries in his past 50 games. He's in great nick. Bulldogs have won only three of their past 15 games against the Eels. And the Eels have won uh, only, the Eels have won only eight of their past 10 clashes against the Bulldogs at a core stadium gigs. Mm, Interesting stat there. I mean, I think think the Eels... We they haven't got a lot of players involved in, in Origin this year, so they're keeping, they're maintaining the majority of their squad together throughout this Origin period, which again is is great for for club teams. Um, so I know some of the shape that the Bulldogs played there against the Roosters on the weekend, like that, it went down by by one point, a field goal at the back end of the game, which uh, they, they came so close, but so far really, can they get up and knock the wheels over? I'm not sure. I'm on the Eels for this one. I think it's going to be tighter than maybe what everyone thinks. And, yeah, I'm just going to go Eels, mate, 1 to 12. Yeah, righto, mate. So uh, just to get the job done in a close affair, it's going to be a ripping round, that is for sure. Now, listen, big fella, uh, the kids get on last week. None from two. So you took the Warriors uh, 1 to 12 and then over 44 and a half points. So Warriors ended up pumping them. I think it was 38 in the end. Um, So you're all over it, but kind of not, if that makes sense. And then you went five out of seven in the pick seven, mate, which was pretty good coming off the back of an origin game, buddy. Yeah, well, as we've said, it was, uh, it's a hard one to work out who's going to back up and play and then obviously get through those games. And we've seen a number of Origin players that were injured backing up. Um, so a tough one to pick on the back of Origin until you see who's who's what players are announced, you know, an hour out from a game. So yeah. not a bad effort there, mate, but looking to go a couple more, obviously, with full round back this week. So, mate, my pick the round this week. You're after, mate, to start with? Yeah, give us a pick the round, big fella. Pick the round, mate. Okay, I'm going to start with, mate, the Titans. The Raiders with Croker's three out of the game. Yep. Uh, the Eagles. The Rabbits. The Knights. Panthers. Storm. And the Eels, mate, to wrap it up. Jeez, the Knights put the value into it, mate. This Obviously, is the Knights blow it out a bit. But 
71 bucks, mate. 71 bucks for that. 71 pick bucks. Eight. Pick eight. That is, uh, that is good. Hey, you know what? The Knights Broncos matchup is uh, is a pretty exciting. We've got the, the two Queensland fullbacks um, who were in contention for, for Origin One, Reese Walsh, and so they're gonna want to, they wouldn't want to perform. And Kayla Ponga, mate. So yeah, be interesting to see that game. And you know, just uh, I know what it's like, mate. When you when you're ready to go back into camp, you know whether you go on flat stick during this game or you want to try and get yourself through the game to get into Origin camp, you know. Yeah, every player wants to play Origin, so um, but you don't want to be coasting through the game and and not play well. So it'd be a bit interesting matchup. Ponga versus Going to be Walsh, a and uh, Reese Walsh was pretty. Uh, he, he was he was backward in coming forward after Origin. Either was he? He was uh, he was certainly nice and vocal, mate. Um, I'm sure that the man. I did point. see those comments. I did see yeah. those comments, and uh, uh, I'd like to see those comments uh, printed out and put up around the change rooms <laughs> and the Blues sheds. To be honest, he played one. He played one game, and uh, and he was quite outspoken. So, I think yeah. that would be uh, that might that might be raised um, during the, the Blues Origin camp. I'd like to think. I reckon it's going to be on to this game too. That is for sure. What about the kids? Get on, mate. What do you got for us this week, buddy? Uh mate. This week I do, man. I'm going to go on the Raiders game. I, you know, I'm so happy for for Jared Croker to be playing his three hundredth game. Um, the fairy tale. Doesn't always come through, but I think this week, Matt, it will. So I'm going to go Raiders um, head-to-head, mate, to win. Yep. Margin of 1-12 to 12 and Jared Croker to to score um, any time try scorer. I love it, mate. I love the fact so, that you're getting behind Jared Croker too. A uh, wonderful man. And, uh, yeah, let's hope that it's a, a really wonderful celebration, uh, you know, with the camera. Loves a punt too. Loves Does his he? horses. I think he's into his trotters, yeah. Yeah, loves his trotters. So I think uh, he's got a number of horses Currently, uh, currently running, mate. So he's a, he's a bit of a lad, and he's uh, as I say, he's well respected by his by his teammates, his fans, and his opponents. So hopefully, the fairy tale comes through, and um, some decent little odds for that one, mate. Uh, he'll be definitely downloading the Palmer Red app, and he'll be getting involved because he knows how simple <laughs> it is, and he'll be following the kids get on too. That is for sure. But as we always say, do it in a responsible manner, and always think about what you're really gambling with. For more information, go to the Gamblers Help online or the number on the screen. Hey, Gids, absolute pleasure as always, mate. And I don't want to hold you up any longer. It is a family holiday. Ah, please, mate. This is a priority, mate, for me. Happy birthday too, mate. Uh, That's the part up there for, mate. Yeah, no, no. It all sort of of, of came in together, mate. I think a little, um, well, some direct flights uh, up this way now to from Newcastle to Proserpine. So snap those up and then tie it in with the birthday, mate, uh, tomorrow. So... Great to be away with the family for a little mid-season getaway, mate. But um, yeah, not not a bad not a bad spot, mate. Just to uh, have just a look to, at that. to knock over the don't argue, hey. <laughs> that is the best spot we've <laughs> seen, mate. You're an absolute superstar. You have a wonderful <laughs> birthday celebration with the family, mate. And uh, we'll talk next week. Going to be a ripping uh, week of NRL action this week, kids. Absolutely, thanks, buddy. All the best of us. Think, is this a bet you really want to place? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.